Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Fantasy Romance and Romantic Fantasy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Ah, okay, that tastes really good this morning. I'm, I'm having a moment. Just, just bear with me. So good. <laughs> um, today is Tuesday, September 21st, day before the autumn equinox. And it is an autumnal morning here. Uh, quite chilly. It was uh, 46 degrees Fahrenheit when we woke up, 42 with wind chill. And you can see if you're on video that there's a, uh, a brisk little breeze blowing my hair. Uh, and it definitely has that tinge of autumn to it. So last week was unseasonably hot. So I we're all right with this turnover in the seasons. Uh, it's as it should be. But uh, we'll still have a lot of garden yet. I don't think we're close to a hard freeze. Cross our fingers, knock on wood. So let's see. Um, yesterday I worked on the Kindle Vela project. I wasn't quite ready to dive into the thing for agent Sarah, uh, which I will do today. But, uh, yesterday I added to, uh, wedded to darkness and put up another episode. Some people are asking, um, how am I feeling about Kindle Vela? Is it working? There's a lot of rumors flying around apparently some gal uh and this is hearsay i heard somebody else say it that's what hearsay means <laughs> yeah you're welcome for that explanation uh we we define things here at jeffy's first cup of coffee actually i do have people say uh that they're glad and people besides my mom say that they're glad that i explained some of these things cuz we do forget what like industry jargon is so Kindle Vela is uh, Amazon's answer to radish, which is a serial reading app. Uh, you read it on your phone. The first three episodes of any story are free. And then after that you pay to read successive episodes and you pay in tokens. So you can like buy so many tokens. So it's not even straightforward as like you pay a penny per chapter or a dollar per chapter or something like that. Instead it it's by word count. And so when I uploaded, I have five episodes up. So the first three are free. And so now I have two pay episodes and the one I uploaded yesterday, it said something like, I think it's by every hundred words because I uploaded like 1800 words and it said, um, 18 tokens. So by the time Amazon figures out their very, very small percentage that they pay and they're paying like at Kindle unlimited rates, which is something like 0. 0.004 cents per page read. And as near as we can figure, it seems like Amazon is paying on Kindle Vela something around that 0. 0.004 cents per, per hundred words. It may have been per hundred words. Uh, and then Grace and I have both gotten these bonuses of what seem to be semi arbitrary amounts. I've been trying to run the metric. Her bonuses are 10 times. No, hers are like 20 times the size of mine. Um, and we can't figure out why, except that, I mean, Grace is clearly more awesome than I am. <laughs> she got like a couple of favorites and crowns and she has a higher author rank on Amazon than I do, but we still don't know what metric Amazon's using to decide. So they, we've both gotten two bonuses now, which is really the only money we're making on Kindle Vela that, uh, that we could tell. I mean, otherwise it's like a couple of dollars. Um, but I w I wanted to write more on this story. And so I thought, well, that'd be fun to, I wanted to add to it and it's interesting because I had uploaded those four episodes back in July for the launch. 
And then I just had to focus on Dragon's Daughter. It turns out that I am definitely one of those authors who has to focus on one project at a time. I know that there are lots of authors out there who like can work on one in the morning and the other in the afternoon, or they can draft one and edit one. Me. And it's not surprising to me because this is uh, definitely how I do pretty much everything that I am a singular focus kind of person. Um, but on the plus side of that for me is that if, um, you know, when people ask me how I can write books so quickly, I think that's part of how I do it. It's because that book receives all of my attention. So I had to stop working on the Kindle though. I thought maybe I could do a little bit on the side, you know, at a couple hundred words at a time. Uh, but it was, it was impacting dragon's daughter. So I had to stop. I'm a little bit late -ish today. So I'm like trying to find my spot in the, uh, encroaching sunshine. So, um, so yeah, Kindle Valley. So I went ahead and added an episode and I just am continuing to experiment. We'll see what happens. This is what I was starting to say with the hearsay. Apparently someone who's worked on Kindle Vela for Amazon posted to some boards that, uh, that the Amazon management had stopped supporting the Kindle Vela project three quarters of the way through that. And that she's someone who has worked on this project and that's what she had said. So is it true? We don't know, but, uh, people were taking that as, oh, that's why Kindle Vela is not working very well. Um, discoverability is really bad on it. So as far as we can tell when I did not add my episode, it, um, I mean, it languished. It was not like people were discovering those first four episodes and waiting for it. It pretty much just ground to a halt. So I'm interested to see adding that next episode, what'll happen. Um, you know, did a, has Amazon abandoned the project? I don't know. I mean, they're still paying us those bonuses. It doesn't seem like they do that if they'd abandoned it. Um, and apparently UK readers can access it now. So we'll see. Um, and, and I'm going to see if I can find a way and time to add to that. Uh, it would be nice to spend like a week and write a whole bunch on it and then add it. I don't know. And I don't know if it makes sense to add in dribs and drabs or just add it all at once, but it's a life, a low priority project for me especially since they're not giving me Grace Draven bonuses. Um, but she's all happy with her bonus, but she has only uploaded four episodes so far, although hers are longer than mine. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to start working on the project for agent Sarah today. Um, see if I can get my head into that. And did I have anything else to tell you guys? I, I had something in my head when I was sitting down, but I don't know what I was thinking about. Well, the other thing that's, that's coming up and a couple people have emailed to ask about it is the uh, midwinter holiday anthology. I'm going to work on this thing for Sarah this week and then dive into that novella. And that's right. Uh, a lot of you sent in thoughts. Uh, thank you on various media. Um, thank you all for your input. I did talk with grace on Saturday and we debated it and I'm going to write a standalone novella in the dark wizard world. Woo. Uh, it makes, uh, the most sense. Uh, I was very tempted to do one in airs of magic and I had the perfect story that I could do in between dragon's daughter and storm princess. But I thought it, I mean, the overwhelming votes were for more of the dark wizard world. And I realized that even though it is spring there and in Marison where Nick and Gabriel are is a very warm spring. Um, they are equivalent in my mind to 
uh, the the southeast of the U.S. Um, which is why I make a lot of jokes about the wetlands and swamps and so forth. Uh, I picture them a lot like like lower Louisiana and Mississippi, uh, climate wise, ecology wise, or even like even like Florida Everglades as well. Maybe not that far because they they're slightly more temperate than that. Probably Louisiana makes more sense. Um, and the landscape in my mind looks like Louisiana. Some slight differences because I make it possible to grow grapes there. It's not quite as hot and sticky in the summertime. So I don't know what would that make it maybe more like I don't know like low country like maybe South Carolina low country something like that. Anyway um that even though it's a warm spring in Marison compared to the rest of the land uh early spring for instance back in uh Veronica's e, uh, home realm of Elal it's still pretty wintry uh, which would be equivalent to uh, like Wyoming <laughs> uh, this time with that time of year is that it's and so I'm going to find a wintry place and come up with some sort of midwinter holiday which will be interesting because um there are very specific things about that world that I have set up and one of which is that they I mean I feel like I'm spoiling nothing now um but I was kind of leaving it to the reader to discover and I know I've I've mentioned this glancingly before but I very deliberately set them up as having uh no particular religion no religious system and that is because the only thing they worship is is magical ability. There is no higher power than the wizards. So in setting up a midwinter holiday a feast day I'm gonna have to decide and here's a little bit of world building. This is like how how does one decide on world building is that I want to come up with a holiday that people would celebrate in a culture like that. Um, what I'm considering is is that it might be a pagan throwback to the times before the convocation had its real grip on the society. So it would be equivalent to how a lot of our US Christmas traditions are informed by Celtic pagan traditions uh, Celtic pagan rituals. I think that could be really kind of cool and so and then I have to figure out who the characters are because I almost always start with character you guys know this and instead because I'm writing something that is so specifically for this anthology um I need to decide on who these people are <laughs> trying to find a spot a little bit more out of the sun there we go what would be a good story to tell I don't know so um I'm noodling that I'm and that'll be next week I'll start working on that and then from there I can go straight into gray magic actually I just had an idea I wonder if it would be funny to do a story of um is it Silas I can't I can't remember my own character names Silas and Lindella should I go back and tell their actual story it, this is a a romantic tale that is frequently referenced um but I haven't decided how much of their story is fictional but it's a thought isn't it go back in time mostly what I'm thinking about is a story that um <laughs> now I just start thinking of something funny but where these characters in a different place have heard of what's going on with Dick and Gabriel but they're not exactly um I don't know uh they're not involved in that same they're not entangled. That's one thing about writing novellas in a timeline of an existing story especially one that's ongoing is that 
you can really trap yourself into corners if you're not careful because you can disrupt the events of the rest of the timeline. So it's something to think about there. I'm trying to lean in out of the sun. So so yeah that's uh those are my plans for the next couple of weeks and probably going to go see my mom soon. We're trying to figure out a date for that mom and um yeah for once I finish writing this novella which I have not titled it's a good point I need to come up with something for it um I'll go straight into writing gray magic and I was just thinking as I was talking that it would be kind of funny to start except I don't think I can do it. I was going to say I thought it would be funny to start with um Nick being aware of this particular holiday and wanting to celebrate it but I think that would mess up our timeline and besides which um bright familiar ends at a fairly critical moment that I feel like we can't um there wouldn't be much room to delay but we'll see we'll see what we can work in there. and let's see um I have not made much movement towards bringing in interview guests. I know you guys like that. It just gets hard to coordinate and everybody feels like they're really busy right now. So we might do it at some point but uh no movement there. I did get um everything uploaded yesterday so that was great and hopefully I can stay I think I'm pretty well knock on wood which I don't have close by um on target to get all of these things done. I know it sounds like a lot but I have three months three full months and a couple of weeks uh to do these projects. So uh the midwinter holiday anthology in case you haven't heard we're calling it the fire of the frost and we should have a um cover for that soon and Dorinda was telling me her idea for her story yesterday. So and it sounds awesome and I know what Grace's story is. I haven't asked Amanda. We should ask Amanda. I know Amanda has been working on hers diligently. She's a work ahead of time kind of gal. So um exciting stuff right? All right I think that's all I have to tell you. So I'll remind you all that first cup of coffee is part of the frolic media podcast network and you will find more podcasts that you love at frolic.media slash podcasts and I will talk to you all on Thursday. Y'all take care. Bye bye.